Hi, and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for all of your kind comments. I really appreciate them. It's very encouraging. This is not natural to me, so uh, it, it, it feels very nice to have somebody say, you're doing a good job, so thank you. And I have to say, I am so excited. I see so many comments about people starting their bread journeys and baking uh, from scratch, getting rid of some preservatives and doing things themselves. And uh, that is so encouraging. That's exciting. And I am rooting for you. I want you to know I am praying for you. I am rooting for you and I am excited for you. And if you have any questions along the way about baking in general or bread in general or specific uh, things about maybe wheat berries or uh, different sweeteners, things like that, I am happy to help. And if I, I, you know, I don't know everything, I don't know nearly everything, but I can at least show you where to look and I can try and find the answer for you or uh, point you in the right direction. Because I, like you, started on my own and I, I didn't know anything and uh, looking into it and learning the equipment and the terminology and the the, I almost gave up when I saw the list of different wheat berries, you can, you know, the einkorn and spelt and kamut, and I thought, oh, I'm done, can't do it, this is too much, and had to take a breath and go back to it. So I understand how overwhelming it can be, and even if you're not milling your own flour yet, just just baking in general and getting on a schedule is, is pretty tricky. So I am, I am proud of you. If you don't have anybody to say that, I am proud of you, and I'm excited for you, and this is wonderful. So... Congratulations to you, and uh, yay! But today we are going to do, so this is called many different things. I've seen the similar recipe called Amish friendship bread, Amish cinnamon bread, just friendship bread, all, all different names. Uh, what I know it as is Amish friendship bread. I cannot tell you if it is actually Amish by nature. I, I have no idea. but. I will call it Amish friendship bread because that's what I know it as, but I, it, it's cinnamon bread if you prefer. Uh, it is uh, decadent, it has a lot of butter and sugar in it, so it's a, it's a treat bread. And it's also a neat one because it's a batter bread and there's no rising or yeast involved, but it comes out as a nice loaf and you get two loaves. So you, it's perfect to have for your family and to share one with somebody who's in need or somebody you want to bless that day, or you can freeze it for later. I have frozen it and, and got it out when we had a, a rainy day and it's just as good. So I hope that you enjoy it as much as we do. And my daughter did say, you make everything cinnamon. Everything is cinnamon. So maybe this will be my last cinnamon for a while. I hope next week we can do a, a tiramisu or some scones or something and I have a delicious dinner roll recipe I'm excited to share with you. Uh, so join us on the uh, Amish friendship bread adventure today. All right for this recipe we are going to do two cups of room temperature butter. You want the butter room temperature uh, because you want to really take the time and cream your butter with your sugar, whether it's honey granules or, or white sugar, uh, you really want to make sure that they incorporate together and are nice and fluffy and mixed in, especially honey granules. It takes a little bit longer to get them incorporated into butter, so room temperature is better. Not melted, we don't, we don't want a liquidy mess here, uh, just room temperature. If it's too hard, it'll take forever to get incorporated. Um, Okay, so two sticks of butter, one cup, two cups of sugar of your choice. Remember, if you use honey granules, maybe a little bit more just because the granules are a little bit bigger, so they take up more room in the cup. Two eggs, two cups of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, uh, two cups of regular milk with two tablespoons of white vinegar or two tablespoons of lemon juice. Mix it up, let it sit for a while, and then add it in. Um, four cups of flour, uh, if you're using regular store-bought flour, four cups. Uh, I will be using soft white wheat, therefore I might need to do about four and a half cups of flour. We will find out together every time it's different, but soft white wheat because there's no yeast in this bread, which is funny to call it a bread, because um, to me bread is yeast. Uh, so soft white wheat, four cups and two teaspoons of baking soda. Uh, we're going to mix it all together, and then you can either 
line your pan with parchment paper, line it with some butter and dust around some flour in there so that the cake pops out really, or the bread pops out really easily. Um, and this is the USA pan that's already coated with silicone, so you don't need to do anything with it. So we're going to bake at 350 for, you know how I am, 45 to 50 minutes because everybody's oven is different. So we will get started. I'm going to try and find my spatula that I have. Here it is. Two sticks of butter. And we really, really, really want to take the time to let the sugar, the honey granules, and the butter incorporate together. We always have a bit higher than one cup. I need a deeper container so that I can really dip my cups in and not have to scoot them around. I'm not one who goes to buy all the new things when you get a, a new set going on, so I try and make do with what I have and sometimes it's a little bit tricky. This is better. If you're going out to buy stuff, this was Walmart. It's just rubber made. It's cheap. Uh, but they're deeper and it's wide enough you can fit your, your cup in here and scoop. And it's deep enough you can really get it to the edge and, and fill your cup easy. This is too shallow, so I'll work on that. Maybe next time I'll have a new one. Okay, so I'm just going to turn the mixer on. I don't know how long this is going to take, but I'm not going to stop until it's really incorporated and I don't see gritty um, sugar anymore. So I've let this go a couple of minutes. You can still see some granules of, uh, well, the honey granules in there. Uh, I'm going to let this go another minute, but I wanted you to see an idea. Even if you stopped right here, this is probably good. I like to mix it a little bit more, and it's going to mix, obviously, with the milk and the other things. But you really, really want to get the butter nice and fluffy and mixed in with the sugar as best you can. the two eggs. Mill my flour. So four cups of soft white wheat. 
four cups after it's milk, not four cups of wheat berry. does a great job of scraping the sides down but sometimes the scraper gets some on the back of it so you want to with any mixer just keep scraping so everything's incorporated well I know when I had a KitchenAid stand mixer those were great but I would always have to scrape the bottom a little bit more or things wouldn't get as incorporated uh, and then you'd have like one cake one way and one a, a little different because there was more butter at the bottom or something so just uh, be mindful that you scrape everything. This is the rest of the half. Okay, this is the consistency you want um, much thicker than a you know pancake waffle batter it's going to be gloopy and if you didn't uh, mix your butter in there will be lumps of butter but they will bake out this will be delicious bread but this is about what you're going for consistency wise I've turned this off so you can hear me a little bit better but while it's mixing while you've added the last ingredient you're letting it mix we're going to have a middle sprinkle and a top sprinkle of sugar and cinnamon on this bread. So what you need is two-thirds cup sugar. Again, I'm using honey granules, but whatever, whatever you use, two-thirds cup. And then my suggestion is two teaspoons of cinnamon, but you know, if you like more or less, that's fine. Or if you want to switch it out for pumpkin pie spice or whatever, uh, but I like cinnamon, so. Then you want to give it a good stir in so it's incorporated really nicely. All right, always takes forever to wipe down the, the actual uh, roller in there. But this is what we're going to do. We have enough for two loaves, so we're going to pour half the batter into two of these. So fourth and a fourth. And then we're going to sprinkle this on half and half. And then, well, a fourth and a fourth. And then we're going to pour the rest on and sprinkle the rest of the, the good sugar mixture on top of it. And then we're going to swirl it a little bit. So to prepare you for all the steps there, we're, we're pouring a, a, a fourth and this and a fourth and this. You eyeball it. It's never going to be perfect. I always have one bigger than the other, but I've been doing this for years. I love this recipe, and I was very grateful I could convert it. You hear that? This is squeaky. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I'm just trying to get it into all the corners here. If you want to try and reach perfection, you can get your scale out. And like I know these pans weigh the same and you can try and have the same amount. I always end up having one heavier or fuller and I have to take it out of the oven, uh, the, the least filled one out of the oven first when it's baking, but that's just what I'm used to. Okay, so I've got ish a fourth in here. You just kind of tap it down to be as flat as possible. Doesn't really matter. So we're going to want to do a fourth and a fourth. I tend to sprinkle a little bit more in the middle than on top. If you put too much on top, it'll kind of burn in the oven. We are going to mix it in together, but if there's more on top than in the middle, uh, you can get a little caramelization, which is good, but it doesn't always look the nicest. So put a little bit more than a fourth in each of these. Just get a good even layer on. Kind of shake it down. Ooh, the cinnamon. All right, now I hate wasting anything, so I try and get it all down, ready to go out. With the layer of cinnamon sugar in the middle, it can be a little tricky to try and um, flatten with the spatula because it'll pull off of the sugar layer if that makes any sense. So just be patient. Try and cover it all up as best you can. You know what I didn't do? Preheat my oven. <laughs> 350. Okay, preheating. So pretty much I've got everything out of there. The whole top layer wants to move as one because it's kind of sandy underneath of it. So you just have to be a little bit patient. Try and work it to all the edges and all the corners. It's gonna taste great no matter what. So even if you just kind of mix it at this point, it doesn't matter, but I try and do a nice even coat on top. Yep, so I think this one's my one that's more full. Messy work. Ah. 
Okay, so then evenly split what's left of your sugar cinnamon mixture and sprinkle it on top of each. Just a, a nice coating if you can. Try not to have it all in one spot. Okay. Then, just take a knife and what we're going to do is stick it in and just go back and forth. Turn the knife this way, turn it this way. We're going to make swirls in it. And you don't want to just mix everything in together. You can and it'll taste good, but when you cut into this you get neat little swirl designs. Uh, that's really pretty. One time I got one that looked exactly like a smiley face and it was perfect. It was what I needed that day. It was really neat. But we're just going to go back and forth once up and then back down to where you started. And remember, whatever sugar is showing on top, there's a good chance it's going to get caramelized. So if you don't like the crispy maybe pat it down just a little bit to get kind of stuck into the batter but if you like a good caramelized sugar then mix lightly the honey granules tend to to burn a bit more than the sugar would so I I'm trying to mix it in nicely the first time you know trying to uh, use my old recipes with the new healthy ingredients uh, you know I've had some great hits and I've had some misses so you learn every time you bake, and I've learned that with this, before I'd leave a lot of sugar on top because I like how it turned out. Now I try and mix it in a little bit better because the honey granules don't quite caramelize like sugar would do, like white sugar. So just back and forth, and this is the back of the knife, back and forth, and then back down to the beginning. Oh, now we're preheated. I didn't forget too badly. And then for me, I'm patting the top sugar in a bit. And we are just going to bake these at 350 for 45. I check on them at 40 minutes. See how your oven is. The, the basic time is 45 to 50 minutes. You want to be able to stick in a toothpick or something. I have my little handy cake batter testers and make sure that nothing's coming out. And if you're like me and one is heavier or fuller than the other, test, test this lighter one first because it'll come out first and then you might need a couple extra minutes on this one. If you're amazing and you nail it and get the right uh, measurements uh, in each, then good on you and teach me how you do that. So, doesn't look like much now, but boy oh boy is this going to bake up and taste so good. So I will see you in 40 to 50 minutes. Pulled these out of the oven about mm, 8 minutes ago, let them kind of cool a bit. Uh, and they smell delicious and they cook for about 47 minutes so whatever your oven is doing today mine is about 47 minutes but I cut it in half just to see and boy it is still steamy here but it's beautiful beautiful you can kind of see the swirl I don't think I swirled it as much as normal but we have our taste testers here that are that are desperate for a good taste when you cut this, we have the layer of sugar and cinnamon on top, so it kind of uh, pops off a little bit. So you want to press down with your knife so that you don't just rake across because then all the crumblies will fall off. But I should technically leave this to be cooler so it'll cut a little bit better. Right now it's kind of crumbly, which nobody cares. They just want some. So... <laughs> Very, very hot, so watch out. Very hot. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, blow, blow, blow. Here, the whole crust of yours came up. Thank you. What do you think? I love it. Yeah, this is one of awesome. Amelia's favorites here. And mine. And yours, yeah? Good. Well. Oh, excuse me. This is a good one. Very good. Oh. Well, I hope that you enjoy this. And again, I'm praying for you. I'm rooting for you with your new bread baking adventures and, and goodies. And I will see you next time. I hope you enjoy this recipe.